Armored Core Law, Interior Union. When two great powers combine, will they shape the world around them, or will they simply watch to see what happens? This is Interior Union. History. The Interior Union was formed through the merging of the corporations Leon Mechanica and Melius in the post-national dismantled war period, becoming Europeans' number one tech firm. However, Interior Union as a single corporation would not officially become publicly known until 10 years later within the League. As such, what we do know is during the Lynx War, who was active at this time was the Interior Group, a collection of corporations based in Europe, all collectively united with the yet-to-be Interior Union. As such, this group contained the two corporations that would merge to become the Interior Union Corporation, Leon Mechanica and Melies, but also Ultra, who at the time was a subsidiary of Leo Mechanica. This explains why then, during Armored Core 4 missions like Firefly and Line of Defense, it is stated that an interior squadron or force is there, because at that time it is not a single corporation, but this group that is operating in these missions. What also should be mentioned here, is with Ultra being part of this group, their attack on the GA mining facility either was to aid this group, or an effort to try and build up resources to become independent, which they would do years later. Another point to add is, although not officially part of the interior group, Ray Leonard and Arkovit maintained a strong alliance with the group during this time, shown by the Y01 Telus Next, who incorporated Ray Leonard and Arkovit parts, including the S08 Maxwell Generator, the Laura FCS, and the S01 VR Overbooster. Yet, the Interior Union Corporation itself would not really start to make its mark on history until the aftermath of the Lynx War as part of the League. During this time, the Interior Union is said to have had an overall high level of technological prowess, and by far the leading company in the field of laser technology. But what is most important here is that the Union controlled the fossil fuel market, making them extremely important to corporations like GA, who went as far as to buy stakes in the corporation to try and secure the fossil fuels they would need. But GA and Interior Union would still attack one another even as members of the League, the reason behind this butting of heads? One reason is Taurus, the company funded by the Union, which put all of GA's foes into one, including Raylinard, Arkovit, and GA Europe. Taurus, though independent from the interior Union, would not have been started if not for the Union's funds. As such, maybe GA sees this as a way to cut off the life support of Taurus, allowing the company to be an easier target to be rid of. Another reason, if you ask a League member, is that GA is acting independently of the League. As such, the Union is doing what it can to maintain order against this independent corporation, whose vision does not align with the League's goal, and is preventing the peace we all seek. In truth, however, the battles between GA and Interior Union during this period are known to have caused huge damage and the loss of many lives, including the Lynx Don Carnell, Stigro Arms Forts, the 8th Fleet, a GA Gigabase, Interior Union land crabs, a number of aerial fortresses, and a large fleet of Interior Union ships. Along with these, however, it's also been reported that the Union has tried to kill outside mercenaries and even turn on allies. This can be seen in missions, such as Defeat the Eighth Fleet, where an arms fort Stigro of the Union turned on its mercenary partner, and Defeat Gigabase, where the mercenary's vanguard booster malfunctions and explodes. Still, even with all this, Depending on Stray's choice, either the Union would follow the League's example and pull back after some time fighting Orca, or would be the one along with Stray's operator to lure the Lynx to a trap to stop his killing spree. Products The Interior Union would produce many products, including Nex designs, a range of Nex parts, and arms forts. Starting off with the Nex, these include the Y06 Aurora, a craft with missile support in mind, the Y02 Albero, a tank type craft with energy weapons in mind, the Y11 Latona, a lightweight craft specializing in energy defense, the Y12 Ops, a craft with the use of integrated arm weapons in mind, and the Y09 Rigel. This is just the start of a long production list, as the Union would produce next parts in all areas, including the H11 Latona Head, the C11 Latona Core, two arm types, the A11 Latona, a lightweight arm part designed for offensive use only, and the A12 Ops, an integrated laser weapon part with devastating attack power. Next is two leg parts, the L09 Rigel, lightweight low impact legs, 
and the L11 Latona attack based biped legs designed for mobility and medium loads. Three boosters are also included, the MB11 Latona, the BB11 Latona and the SB11 Latona. Arm weapons from this corporation include the HLR09 Bicrux, a high power laser rifle that fires two shots at once, the RG03 Captain, a lightweight railgun suitable for multiple firing ranges, even close range, the LR04 Avia, the latest standard laser rifle, and the LB Elton, a laser blade that utilizes advanced energy technology with a long, thicker blade. The Union also produced back weapons, including the HLC09 Acrux, a dual shot high laser cannon made with former Melies laser technology, the RC01 Fact, a back mounted rail gun designed for maximum penetration, and the PC01 Gemma, a large weapon with enough firepower to easily be used as a primary weapon. Finally, we come to the arms forts of this corporation, which are the Stigro, a waterborne arms fort armed with oversized laser blades and missiles, the fastest of all arm forts, interior union land crabs, which are equipped with very accurate strafing lasers and six missile launchers mounted on the sides, below and between the main weapons, the aerial fortress Thema, an airborne fortress with the idea of mobility and defense in mind, and finally, in cooperation with Omer Science, Answerer, a floating arms fort armed with the latest in Kojima technology, including Kojima beams, Kojima missiles, and assault armor. Links employed. This corporation is known for being the only one to have no male links in their employment. Could this be a statement that the corporation believes women make better links? Maybe these links believe in the union's cause. Or is it just someone's fantasy of being surrounded by powerful women being fulfilled? Stiletto, pilot of Les Anis Follies. Alive, whereabouts unknown. Eapu, pilot of Vero Nock. Alive, whereabouts unknown. Windy Fanchin, pilot of Ryder Palash. Conflicting reports at this time. Either alive, but whereabouts unknown, or killed by strayed. In the end, the fate of Interior Union is still unknown, like many corporations of this time. But no matter their fate, it is clear they did not like Strayed, and that they too would fall in line behind the League, watching as either two heroes save the world, a single lynx brought down the cradles, or a single monster would kill millions, and eventually come after them. This ends the report on the corporation known as the Interior Union.